Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people who call upon thee and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who by the leading of a star didst manifest thy only begotten Son to the Gentiles, mercifully grant that we, who know thee now by faith, may after this life have the fruition of thy glorious Godhead. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in the 60th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be con converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Epah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring golden incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaoth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarsish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Here endeth the Old Testament lesson. <clears throat>
the Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have find, found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. This time, uh, children uh, ages three through sixth grade are dismissed for Sunday school. Um, Angel is there, Mr. Angel is there. If you could uh, follow him, uh, you'll have a wonderful time uh, studying the word and, um, and uh, having a great time getting to know each other, too. Well, I'd like to give everyone a warm welcome. It is so good to see you. I, I'm, uh, it, it is not a, a pleasant day necessarily outside, and, and I'm just uh, grateful uh, that you are here with us this morning. And for those of you who are joining us uh, online, a very warm welcome to you as well. Um, if you are joining us online and you are a visitor, well, you may, uh, if you're on Facebook, a visitor, a, a, a virtual visitor in, information card ought to be popping up. If not, you can go to stechurch forward slash new. Fill that out. We would love to, to get to know you a little bit. And if you're a visitor here at St. Thomas, we do have a visitor information card that is on the back of our order of worship attached along perforated lines. Just fill that out and put it, uh, tear it off and put it in the basket over there to the side. Um, we would love to connect with you as well. I hope you will continue to join us on each day for, uh, except for Saturday, on, uh, for morning prayer at 8 a.m. and evening prayer at 5 p.m. When I'm doing morning and evening prayer, I typically uh, give a thought or a devotional or, or get into the text a little bit. Uh, so that may interest you. It may not. Um, so it, it's, um, it's there. 
and, uh, and try to take advantage of that to go through scripture. Um, just a few notes about the service today. Do remain in your seats for communion. The clergy will come to you and give you the elements. Uh, in, in lieu of our passing the plate, you may drop your offering in the basket on the table. Youth group will meet this evening from 4 o'clock to 6 p.m. at St. Thomas in the youth room, which is the old business office in the F building. So, uh, so please do, um, if you uh, have a youth, if you are a youth, um, you would like to uh, engage, please do. Uh, it will be a wonderful time. Bible study resumes this Wednesday. We will be beginning uh, a study on Ephesians, on Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. That will be at, um, at 11 o'clock a.m. And of course, um, Sunday evening, next Sunday evening, this is, it is the third Sunday of the month. It will be time for our, um, our Sunday evening service. It is, uh, it is a service, it is an ancient service. It is uh, derived from the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. Um, however, uh, the, the music there uh, is, is arranged to, to con contemporary settings. Um, so uh, uh, if you haven't tried it, come try it. You, you, you might like it, and, um, and we'd love to have you. So now let us stand to sing hymn number 30 on page 8 of your order of worship.
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it has been quite a week, I must say. Um, the events of the past week, of course, have been on all of our minds. But it really shouldn't be a big surprise. The rhetoric that we have been engaging in over the past eight years, really, has been untenable. Portland, Oregon, has been burning for months, and it's just been a matter of time before there was a reaction. Social media is giving platforms and voice to those on the fringe and to grifters. There have been strange and divisive ideologies that have been introduced and mainstreamed, conspiracy theories and echo chambers that we ourselves engage in. But that's not the essence of the problem. It reflects the essence of the problem back to us. The idolatry of politics, the idolatry of tribe, the view of our opponents as evil, all situated within a post-Christian vacuum. And it must be said very forcefully that we live in a post-Christian country. We live in a post-Christian city. There's just no denying that now. And vacuums are always filled by something. You and I, most people, feel unstable, feel anxious, and feel as if the ground is moving from within our feet, under our feet. At a pandemic, deaths, fear, and it feels like a societal earthquake. It makes me appreciate the stability that is possible in this country of ours, this republic of ours, and it causes us to grieve the loss of that sense of stability. In many ways, we are experiencing much of how the rest of the world lives. This certainly feels familiar to Jerusalem in first century Jerusalem, the province the Roman province of Judea. I read this scripture here, this portion of scripture here from, um, from chapter 2. And one of the things that we, as we read that, we might skip over a bit, or at least sort of, um, you know, we get it, but we don't sort of imbibe it. It's when in verse 3, Matthew writes, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And all Jerusalem was troubled. All Jerusalem was troubled. Herod and all Jerusalem. Now we understand why Herod might be troubled. He's hearing this prophecy of the Messiah, the anointed one. That's what Messiah means. Christ, Christos. That means anointed one. You know, I, I've told you before, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is, his, is, is what he is. He is Messiah. It, it, it is Greek for the Hebrew word Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus the anointed one. So the Messiah is being born. The Messiah has been prophesied. And Herod, of course, is troubled because what does that do to his power if Messiah comes in the way that he understands it? He is, he is set to the back burner at best. But why was Jerusalem troubled? Was Jerusalem troubled because they loved Herod? Because he had 80% uh, approval rating in the, uh, in the latest polls? Not at all. They knew what Herod's reaction would be. And he certainly delivered that reaction as we read further in Matthew 2. Herod was a brilliant man. He was a very talented man. 
He was a great organizer and even a better builder. But he also had some sort of health condition that they don't know what it was exactly, which left him profoundly paranoid. Herod was a profoundly paranoid king, so much so that he murdered his favorite wife and two of his sons. He was a dangerous, paranoid man who was very talented and brilliant. If you go to Masada in, in uh, Judah, you will see one of the most famous fortresses that he built. It took the Romans serious ingenuity in, um, in the later half of the first century to overtake and overwhelm that fortress. You can see the Roman um, uh, works there when, when you go there, when you're looking off the top of it. But it was so, it was so impenetrable that it took the Romans a long time to, um, to overtake it. And if, you, and, if you, and if you're there in Masada, and I'm, and I'm talking about, I'm giving you an example of how paranoid he was and how, and how, and how ruthless he was. There is a, there's a layout of the rooms. You can, you, you can walk through the layout of the rooms. And the way they laid the rooms out is that Herod had his wife and kids as a buffer to him. He, he was, the enemies, if they were to overrun Masada, had to go through the rooms of his wife and children in order to get to him, which in his mind gave him more um, time to escape. So if, if, he, if his family is just a mere buffer to give him time to escape, if he saw his own family like that, how did he see his subjects' families? Well, we find out later in this atrocity that comes later that we, um, that we remember in, uh, in, in the day of the Holy Innocents right after uh, Christmas. And all Jerusalem was troubled. And you can understand why. So the wise men, they're coming. And, and what are they all about? What, this is a strange story. I mean, this is one of the stranger stories in, 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 in the New Testament. Um, first, we believe that, scholars believe that this was not at Jesus' birth. Jesus was probably about two years old when the wise men came. Um, it, this, was, this, was, this is why Epiphany is, is, is later also, but it was probably about two years old. We believe, uh, the scholars believe, uh, that, that he was about two years old. And, um, and the wise men saw a star. Scholars are unsure about what the star was. Probably was a supernatural phenomenon. They came from the east, probably Babylon or Persia. And the journey took weeks. It was a very long, long journey. And what are magi? What are magi? Um, probably not kings. Magi were, were, were Gentiles. They were astrologists of some sort, magicians of some sort, dream interpreters. If you think of, they're, they're kind of new agey, if you, if you, if you, um, if, if you sort of, uh, you know, in our, in our particular context. Which makes the story even more bizarre. Because these people, these, these, it was all contrary to God's law. The, the, the Gentile astrologers and magicians but they're coming. They're the ones who are coming to, to give homage to the Jewish king. And, and it really is sort of a, not sort of, it's, it's a fulfillment of what we read today. Uh, um, Isaiah 63, and the king shall come to his light, you see. And this was written in a time of, um, of imminent exile. So, so, Jesus, so Israel's religious authorities, Israel's governmental authorities reject the Christ. They reject the anointed one. They seek to kill him. And Gentile lawbreakers go through great lengths to come to him. Gentile lawbreakers give, go through uh, immense time to give him homage. The virgin birth, this story set the pattern of God's kingdom. This is the pattern of God's kingdom. You see, we have a tendency to think of God's kingdom as when I'm comfortable. God's kingdom is, is happening when I'm stable, when I'm comfortable, when I have some buffer against life. And lots of churches message this way. 
but it really is a denial of reality. The cancer, death, heartbreak fall through the cracks because it doesn't fit the narrative of comfort and ease and stability. But when you read the Bible, you find out that this is not true about God's kingdom. Cultural comfort does not equal God's kingdom. In fact, it, it seems in this story and the rest of Scripture to be quite the opposite. In fact, we know that God is working when tremors are happening, when things are shaken. In fact, the cross of Christ was the ultimate tear in reality. The heavens ripped open. The word of God invades the world, lulled by power and complacency. Not to wreak havoc on us sinners. Not to shower down fire and brimstone and wrath against us rebels. But the heavens were ripped open to shower us with grace. To shower us with adoption. If you want to know what's wrong today, really, if you want to know what's truly wrong today, you're looking at it. You're looking at it right now. It is me. It is you. It is us. But in the upside down kingdom of God, we are absolved, we are justified. We are forgiven, we are adopted, we are loved. We are simultaneously sinner and just before God. Now the wise men gave Jesus and his family gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why is that? They were expensive items from their treasure. They, they were wealthy and they would have brought some treasure. Why did they give that to them? to finance the family's exile to Egypt. They knew the family had to leave. They knew what was happening. They knew Herod's plans. They understood Herod's plans. You see, God brought them something unexpected, something bizarre and strange. God brought them to give homage to the anointed one, Jesus Christ the Messiah, and to give resources in crisis. All of what we are experiencing now is not in some void. You need, to, you need to understand that. Yes, the ground feels like it is shaking. Yes, things are, are topsy-turvy. Things are not comfortable. Things are, are, are very unstable. But this is not happening in some void. This is not happening um, in, in some in some void that, 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 that we have to that we have to take care of ourselves. God's spirit is moving in a post-Christian society. God's spirit is moving in your life. God's spirit is moving at St. Thomas. For what purposes are only known to him? but he acts for good. He acts for redemption. He acts for our flourishing, for our reconciliation, for our forgiveness. And most times, if we're honest with ourselves, we know that we must be shaken in order to give our attention to something. When we have been shaken, our illusion of control is disabused. We can see seeing him as a blesser of our projects, as our co-pilot, as it were. And we can begin seeing him as he is, sovereign creator, redeemer, transcendent God, and friend of sinners, a, follow, a father to his children. You see, all Jerusalem was troubled. They had every reason to be troubled. We are troubled. But 
that God's kingdom is never what we expect it to be. But it is his way and his pleasure to be our savior, to be our king, to be the sovereign ruler of the universe that holds us in his hand as confused as we are, as frightened as we are. This is an exercise of God's sovereignty for us, not just as a country, not just as a city, but as a church for your family, for you personally. He is worthy of your trust. And I invite you to do just that in this age of anxiety. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice unto God.
invite your prayers for Bill, Joe, Richard, Nancy, DeWitt, Jason, Bob, Brenda, the Landrys. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving for the construction and renovation, for the work of healthcare professionals, for the work of the Christian Community Service Center, and for the loving community at St. Thomas. I seek your prayers for the persecuted church, especially in Iran and India, and for all soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard serving our armed forces, particularly those in combat and their families. I seek your prayers for our president, for our governor, for our county judge, and for the mayor of our city, and for all in the legislative and judicial branches of government. I seek your prayers for those with birthdays this week, Jennifer Underwood, David Chester, Bill Stevens, Grayson Filipovic. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hath taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy, of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. And take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins 
to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ set unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end, that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifest forth his glory, that we might bring out that he might bring us out of darkness into his glorious light. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee 
most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy, heavenly gra thy, thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. <laughs> The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for thee and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and all the earth be to build on them. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give to thee for thy great glory, for all your children and The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.